Well, welcome to our service of worship this morning. We are doing something slightly different, and you'll see we have Dale with us singing, which is um, fantastic. Thank you, Dale, and the famous Wayne as well. But today we're going to sing praises to God, and most of the service is about songs, and we're, we're doing a sort of a songs of praise style of service. We're, we're going to talk about either where these songs have come from in scripture or the writer of them. There's often an amazing story behind those who have written uh, both melodies and the words to these songs. So there won't be a sermon, but there'll be lots of um, verses read and uh, people's live life stories spoken about. So you might like to join me in this prayer, which is from Psalm 103. King of all earth, creator of the universe, holy triune God, from everlasting to everlasting, you are Lord. You are merciful and gracious, O Lord, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. You forgive all our iniquities and heal all our diseases. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. This is our God, the Holy One. Come before him with thanksgiving and offer him the sacrifice of praise. And the first two verses from Psalm 103, which we said together in this prayer. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Well, this first song we're going to sing today is Bless the Lord, O oh My Soul, 10,000 Reasons. And it's written by Matt Redman and Jonas Myron. It was based on this wonderful psalm. And in the psalm, King David, who we see as the author, is looking at his life and remembering what God has done for him throughout his life. It's probably written in the latter part of his life after he had passed through some great crises as we read uh, in the Samuel and the Psalms and uh, we're told of in other parts of scripture as well. And these crises were he was delivered from. Psalm 103 has been described as the Mount Everest of the praise psalms as it exalts the soul to breath taking heights there are no cries for help only cries of praise to an incredible god who is gracious blesses us with good things forgives us heals our diseases redeems us showers us with steadfast love and mercy satisfies our souls and brings justice to those who need it so would you like to join me as we sing this song together, praising our God. And in that, remember all those good things throughout your life that God has done for you. Great and 
supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That looks like a sober man. I think I'll hire him to cut wood for me. That was said of a man on the streets of Lake Rice, Canada, as he walked along carrying a wood saw and a saw horse. The response from a man nearby was, that's Joseph Scriven. He wouldn't cut wood for you because you can afford to hire him. He only cuts wood for those who don't have enough money to pay. That seemed to be the philosophy and attitude of Scriven, a devoted member of the Plymouth Brethren Church. He had a sincere desire to help those who were truly destitute. Joseph was born on September 10, 1819 in Ireland. His parents had financial means enough to afford a wonderful educational opportunity for their son. He was enrolled in Trinity College in Dublin, where he graduated with a bachelor's degree. In this young man, Ireland had the prospect of a great citizen with high ideals and noble aspirations. He fell in love with a young lady who was eager to spend her life with him. However, on the day before their wedding, she fell from her horse while crossing a bridge over the river Ban and was drowned in the water below. Joseph stood helplessly watching from the other side. In an effort to overcome his sorrow, he began to wander. By age 25, his travels had taken him to an area near Port Hope in Canada. He became highly regarded by the people of that area. He tutored some of the local children in their schoolroom. It was there he met a wonderful young lady, Alessa Roche, and again fell in love. They had exciting plans to be married. However, tragedy reared its ugly head once again, and she died of pneumonia before they could wed. As indicated earlier in this story, he laboured in Port Hope among the impoverished widows and sick people. He often served for no wages 
and he even shared his clothes with those less fortunate than himself. On an occasion when Joseph became ill, a friend who was visiting with him discovered a poem near his bed and asked who had written it. Scriven said, the Lord and I did it between us. He thought the poem would, perhaps, bring some spiritual comfort to his mum, who still lived in Ireland. Scriven had not intended that anyone else should see it. On August 10th, 1886, Scriven's body was pulled from a body of water near Bewley, Ontario. Two monuments have been erected in his honour. Each had the first stanza of his song engraved on it. Charles Converse, an attorney and composer, wrote the musical setting we use today. So please join us to sing What a Friend We Have in Jesus. <laughs>
and I cheered and I cheered. I can just imagine that, but you do sound a bit hoarse. Did you do a lot of shouting, Toby? Well, lots and lots of shouting and lots and lots of singing. I see. Well, I'm very glad you are here. We're doing a very special service today with lots of great songs to sing. No bother. I wanted to go and find some spiders. What do you need spiders for, Toby? Oh, uh, just one of my projects, Sue. Do I have to sing? I hate singing. Oh, really, Toby? You ain't singing so much that you're just hoarse after singing at the grand final. That's different, Sue. How is it different, Toby? Well, for starters, we all love football. And when we get together, we football fans want to sing about it. <gasps> no, and that is great, Toby. But you know, there is a very good reason for singing here today. What's that, Sue? Well, here we are all singing together to praise the name of the very, of one very, very special person. Is that Grandpa? I know he's special, although I did think he was rather grumpy last week. No, Toby. The wonderful person I'm talking about is not Grandpa. Don't you remember who we talked about in church last week? We said he's totally good, kind, generous and full of love. Mother Teresa? Oh, Toby, Mother Teresa was a good and kind person, but you need to think a bit harder. The person who is truly worthy of worship is the most important person in the world. I know, Sue. It's Donald Trump. I know he's very important. But I've heard my mother well, say... Well, never mind what you've heard your mother say. No, Toby, the most important person loves each one of us so much that he was willing to give up his life for us. I know, Sue. It's Jesus. Well done, Toby. Yes, Jesus is the one person who is worthy to be praised and honoured. One of the ways that we praise him is by singing to him. It is one of the ways that we can show our love and our gratitude for all that he has done for us. I see. So, do you think Jesus enjoys us singing to him? He does, Toby. He loves the praises of his people. And so our praise is very, very important to us. I bet he doesn't like Jacqueline singing. She sings out of tune and she puts me off. You know, Toby, Jacqueline actually does sing in tune. And Jacqueline, because she loves Jesus, he loves to hear her sing to him. And that's what matters most. doesn't matter whether we can sing the right notes or the wrong notes. It's just that we show him our love. Oh, she just gives it her all, and don't I know it sitting behind her? Well, I know, I hear it in the office often. Well, maybe she hasn't got the, the best voice, but she is not half-hearted in her love for Jesus. So are you going to sing with me or not, Toby? Can the spiders wait? All right, Sue, I'll do it. And if you praise Jesus, as wholeheartedly as you sang at the grand final, not only will you bring Jesus pleasure, but I think you will also rather enjoy yourself. I'm sure I shall enjoy myself, Sue. Oh, good. Do you think Lucy will be there? I have my special friend Horace with me. He's longing to crawl out of his box and meet her on a pew. Horace? Yeah, my eight-legged friend. Oh, Toby. In the fourth century, in the year 325, a group of 318 bishops came from all around the world to meet in Nicaea, which is now in Turkey, at the request of the emperor Constantine. 
and several concerned bishops. They were concerned about a group of heretics who was led by a priest called Arius in Egypt. And they were raising questions about Jesus' divinity. Was Jesus actually God? And so they brought these bishops together and to write a common faith, a, a, a creed that we call it now, the Nicene Creed, uh, that was developed a little bit further later down the track as well. But so that we can say what we believe, and this Nicene Creed is one that is used by Anglicans, Catholics, Orthodox as well, and one that sort of stayed through time, the, the hundreds of years that, when it was written. And so this is the creed that we often uh, will say, we sometimes say the Apostles' Creed, but we see the Nicene Creeds. As, as Anglicans, we say our faith in these creeds. So would you like to join me as we sing together this creed that speaks about what we as Christians believe? Well, Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 1, verse 12, And for this reason I suffer as I do, but I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day that I have been entrusted to him. This is part of a beautiful hymn 
called Blessed Assurance, and Fanny Crosby, America's most prolific hymn writer, wrote 8,000 gospel songs, many you will know, and hymns during a lifetime, which spanned nearly a century. Six weeks after her birth in 1820, a poorly trained doctor applied a mustard plaster poultice to her eyes, rending, rendering her totally blind. Even in her childhood, she realised she had a special gift and she often said, I have a jewel, I'm content. During her 15th year, she entered the New York Institute for the Blind. Her record there was such that after graduation, she was asked to teach at the Institute. One day in 1873, Aunt Fanny, as she was known, was visiting with a friend, Mrs Knapp, a musician of sorts and a wife of the founder of Metropolitan Life Insurance Company. During their visit, Mrs Knapp played a tune on her piano, which she had recently written. She then asked Fanny, what does this tune say to you? After kneeling in prayer for a few moments, Fanny rose and declared, it says, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. And Aunt Fanny began to dictate verses to Mrs. Knapp, and she wrote them down, fitting them to the melody just as we hear it sung today and as we will sing uh, next. Every day, she says, will I bless you and I will praise your name forever and ever. A verse from Psalm 145, verse 2. So let's, in this praise, bless our God by singing this hymn together, blessed assurance, we are assured, as Fanny was, as many have sung it uh, throughout, the, throughout the years, that we are assured that when we have asked Jesus to be our Saviour and Lord, when we have confessed our sin and we know he's faithful and just to forgive us, that we are assured that we will be with him forever. We've got a lot to praise our God for. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation. Purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Filled with his goodness, 
lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song. Praise him, my Savior. by you who have been given by God to you uh, in our offerings. So let's pray. Lord, you are the bread of heaven, giving life to the world. You fill our emptiness with your goodness. You come to our weakness with your strength. Take and use these gifts to bring in a rich harvest of your heavenly food and life-giving refreshment. Amen. It is important to set our hearts right before God. So let's pray this prayer of confession. Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have broken your holy laws and have left undone what we ought to have done. We are sorry for our sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your Son who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And God promises his forgiveness in these words. God is slow to anger and full of compassion, forgiving all who humbly repent and trust in his Son as Saviour and Lord. God therefore forgives you in Christ Jesus, in whom there is no condemnation. Amen. Amen. The city of Edinburgh in Scotland, with its royal mile and rugged hilltop castle, has produced some of Christianity's greatest hymns, and who but the strong and theologically well-founded Scotch Presbyterians could produce such a powerful hymn on the sovereign eternal power of God as immortal, invisible, God only wise? The words of this hymn were written by Walter Chalmers Smith in 1867. The tune used is that of a traditional Welsh ballad. Walter was born on December 5th, 1824, in Aberdeen, Scotland. He studied theology at Edinburgh. His first ministerial assignment was in London at the Free Scotch Church in Chadwell Street, Islington, where he was ordained. He later, in 1876, returned to Edinburgh, where he pastored Edinburgh Free High Church. It is based on the words found in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 17. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. It is a praise and worship him. It praises our God who is eternal, immortal, invisible and all wise. It is one of those hymns that makes one contemplate the greatness of our God. Please join with us to sing Immortal Invisible.
Hi everyone, um, my name's Beck, and it is my pleasure to read the amazing Zilpa's prayers today. Um, I have added a few lines because there's a bit of stuff happened um, in New South Wales that went hadn't happened when Zilpa wrote them. So yeah, please join us as we pray. Lord, in the last few days, we've seen the number with COVID people with COVID rise. We have heard many vaccinations have been given. We have seen the protests in the city. We experienced an earthquake. We saw Melbourne win the premiership. But Lord, we're all getting tired of lockdowns and being isolated from our loved ones. We put our trust in you, Lord, knowing it is for our own health that we follow the rules and know that this is happening to us in a country that has freedom, a country where we have sunshine, we have spring flowers, we can walk along beaches and bike tracks and through bushland. We do have homes and food on the table. We are truly blessed with a few do nots. Let us be thankful, Lord, for all our blessings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift New South Wales up to you in particular today. Uh, Father, we lift up to you Gladys Bergigliani um, and the troubles that she's facing at the minute. Uh, Father God, we pray for all the people involved in this investigation um, into potential corruption. Um, yeah, Father God, we just pray that the process is above reproach and that justice is done. Um, yeah, Father God, we do lift up to you New South Wales and their COVID struggles. We pray that um, they continue to heal. Um, yeah, and Father God, we do pray for the Liberal Party as they tra have a transitioning time. Um, yeah, Father God, may the next um, government sit under wise heads. Um, may they face the, the um, COVID trials um, with grace and dignity. Uh, Father God, we do lift up to you the weather events over the last couple of days. Um, Father God, we pray for the people that were affected by the tornado in central New South Wales. Um, yeah, Father God, we just pray for all the people that were in the path of that. Um, we pray for the, that families are reunited and that um, people are healthy and safe. And for those few that are unsure about what's happening, um, yeah, or are looking for loved ones or who may potentially have lost loved ones, we just pray your peace and calm onto them. Uh, Father God, we pray for the cleanup effort. Um, may people just be generous of their time and resources so that families can have roofs over their heads again um, and that there wasn't too much damage to property. We also pray for South Australia as they were hit with amazing golf ball size hailstones. Um, yeah, Father God, we just pray that their properties had no damage or very minimal damage and that it was genuinely a once in a hundred years event. We pray for those who are in hospital at this time, for those infected with COVID-19, those who are fearful of infection, and for all who are in quarantine and self-isolation. Jesus, you understand people's fears and pain before they speak of them. We pray for all who are ill or lonely or sad or depressed. Please surround them with your love. Give strength to those in pain and hold the weak in your arms. Give hope and love to those who are mourning loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Trisette and her team working through the problems associated with the fire at the op shop, the house of Chad. The fire has left much to be cleaned up and many questions to be asked. So Lord, be with those who are working to get these things sorted out for the best outcome for the parish, the op shop, the members of our community who have been part of that wonderful outreach service for over 50 years. Lord, we pray for the local SES and fire and police teams who so quickly responded to the fire. Lord, it seems appropriate we now offer our prayers for all the responders. Police, fire, ambos, doctors and nurses and all working with them. Guide their every move and help them to make the right decision at the right time. Allow them to always remain alert and help them to stay motivated in their chosen careers, especially in these tough times. Please let them know that they are appreciated and Lord remind us to display love, kindness and appreciation for each and every one of them. Provide them with protection from danger and ease their fears. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, there are people around the world suffering because of war, food shortages, 
homelessness, lack of Medicare, medical care, young and old, married and single, male and female. There is no distinction. Just suffering because of earthquakes, volcano eruptions, COVID and war, to name a few. We ask your blessings on those people and the world in general, that peace will reign with love and not hate. We here in Australia are miles away from these tragic circumstances as we live in a safe country, a country of peace and freedoms, a little unrest at times with tempers fraying, and we do have loneliness and hopelessness for some, but we know you are with us at all times. But these people around the world need to know your love. Give them the strength they need to carry on to look to a better tomorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now pray for our link missionaries, Prue and David, Rosie and Derek, and Sue and Ash, who are spreading your word and your love to peoples around the world. Guide them all, protect them all, and be with them always. They were called out into the world to teach and spread your word. They are very special people. Keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our Archbishop Philip, our Bishop Paul and our Vicar Sue, and all the leaders and the volunteers in the parish. In particular, we pray for our volunteers working with Pantry 5000 and Matt's Place, providing much-needed supplies and meals to vulnerable people in our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our friends and family, those named on our prayer list and those known to us. Lord, you know their needs and we ask that you restore their health, heal their wounds and give them peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that we have asked in faith, and may you, by your grace, receive through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, we come to celebrate what Christ has done for us on the cross. As we, and so you might like to have your drink and your biscuit ready. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, making us in your own image. We praise you for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by his death on the cross and rising to new life, offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, we lift our voices to praise you, saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And now, gracious God, we thank you for these gifts of bread and wine and pray that we who receive them in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, according to our Saviour's word, in remembrance of his suffering and death, may share his body and blood. For on the night before he died, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, after supper, he took the cup, and again, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We eat this bread and drink this cup to proclaim the death of the Lord. We do this until he returns. Come, Lord Jesus. Father, as we recall his saving death and glorious resurrection, may we who share these gifts be renewed by your Holy Spirit and united in the body of your Son. Bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, there to feast at your table and join in your eternal praise. 
Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive praise and honour and glory and power forever and ever. Amen. And let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you that in this sacrament you assure us of your goodness and love. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and help us to grow in love and obedience that we may serve you in the world and finally be brought to that table where all your saints feast with you forever. And together, Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Well, we come to our notices now. And you, if you've got your um, pew sheet out or newsletter out, on the front I've written what's our Christian response to the COVID vaccination. Now, most of you, I'm sure, are uh, vaccinated. And uh, so if you could let us know if you are, that would be fantastic. But also, if you're talking to some people, here are just some thoughts uh, of a Christian response. But down the bottom of there is a, is a website from a friend of mine, Mark Jury, who wrote, a, I feel, a good uh, balanced article about what our Christian response is to vaccinations. Also, we're still uh, working through the fire at the op shop. We probably will be allowed in early this week, uh, early next week. And we probably will need people to help uh, to clean up on Saturday. So if you are able to, if you could uh, let us know, that would be fantastic. Uh, also, we're, our sympathy goes to Anita uh, Wynum, on, uh, who's one of our eight o'clockers and one, was one of our off-shop volunteers. Uh, sadly, her husband passed away a few weeks ago and I've been willing to, um, uh, to say this online. So just if you could keep Anita and the family in your prayers, I know she would really, really appreciate that. And also, uh, Jessica, Jessica's dad, Tony, died also. Beautiful man. Many of you will have known him if you're at part of 9.30. Uh, so just um, keep the metacurrents in your, in your prayers as well. Samaritan's Purse, we've been getting a few boxes in. We do have some boxes here if you would like them, uh, but also if you just drop them off at uh, the church when you can, that would be fantastic. And just remembering prayers on Sunday, Tuesday and Thursdays, join Beth or I, and also a small group. I've got about five people now who want to be part of our small group. On Monday, you've got the right link this time in there. Uh, so please let me know if you want to come because I'll, I'll send out some material to you. And also if you want to join in the prayer meeting uh, for church, that's on Wednesday at one o'clock. The link is in the church uh, in the bulletin as well. Well, birthdays. It was quite a few birthdays this last week so and next week. So it's Ash Good. 
He turned, oh no, he's not, I'm not allowed to tell you how old he turned. But anyway, Ash and then Caden turned a very special age, now an adult, and Dorothy Wright and Spencer Hansen. It was his birthday as well. So we're going to sing Happy Birthday with my wonderful vocalists. And you'll remember that. So Ash, Caden, Dorothy and Spencer. and has had an incredible impact on people's lives. So where did this hymn come from? It came from Ireland, like potatoes. But anyway, there is only one missionary who is honoured with a global holiday, and only one is known by his own distinct colour, green. You all know who I'm talking about. St Patrick, of course. Well, Patrick was born in 373 AD. When he was 16, he was um, taken by uh, pirates and was sold as a slave. And in the end, uh, he actually was able to uh, escape and got back to his homeland uh, where he spent time with his family. His family really wanted him to stay. He came from England. And, uh, but anyway, one night he had a dream, just like Paul did, uh, about going to Macedonia. And here was an Irishman saying, come over, come over and evangelise us. And so he did. His family weren't too happy about it. So he went back to where his captors were. And from there, he did amazing things. God used him in incredible ways. So he would be out there preaching and people would come from near and far to hear him. Well, the Druids at that time didn't like his influence and they tried to capture him and kill him. But God protected him and more and more people came to faith. And um, by the time he died, he had planted two over 200 churches and had baptised over 100,000 Christians. This is the impact that this one person who just heard God's voice and obeyed him did. Well, what happened then was a few years later, of course he was well known for a few things, but then oh, his work in Jordan, so several centuries later, the Irish church was still producing hymns and prayers and sermons and songs of worship. And Be Thou, Thou My Vision was one of these. And it was written by St. Fallon, who went blind in the middle of his life. Seems to be a theme coming through. And the opening verse of the hymn poignantly draws upon his experience. Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart. And though Fallon must have suffered much from his loss of sight, the effect of his forced darkness was to drive him back to God. His best thought, and whether by day or by night, his only remaining light was Jesus. So the following verses in the, in the uh, song focus on the unity between God, three in one, and us, and between the Father and the Son, with emphasis on the relational dynamic we have with the triune God, with God's presence being ever real. We who sing this song acknowledge that we are rich because the high King of heaven is a treasure that we already have and our victory is already won. So let's sing this song and think about it. You might even like to close your eyes because you probably know the words to the song of the heart and think about that vision that God has given to you and that vision to be his child and what he has called you to do. 
So let's sing this together. passages from scripture, from Job 1, um, from 1 Thessalonians 5. And it's written again by Matt Redman. And the entire message that uh, the writer communicates is the, um, is the words that are in 1 Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So we are encouraged to praise God regardless of our circumstances. So let's sing this as we uh, finish our worship together. And may we go out into this week always rejoicing, praying, praying without ceasing and giving thanks in all circumstances.
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Well, I have a wonderful week and from these hymns that, and from the writers who wrote them, they're encouraging us to praise our God, to bless the Lord, to rejoice, to pray without ceasing, and to be thankful in all circumstances. So let's go into this week remembering those words that we are blessed and God encourages us to sing our praises and to bless him. So have a wonderful week. And may God go with you and may he give you all that you need this week. Have a great week.